Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. We're looking at something a little bit unusual this time, both in terms of what the content is and how it fits into this show. One of the things that I've tried to do in the past on this show is describe how certain things wind up getting on the show, and how the name is sort of a double meaning. From the Star Wars Home Video Library doesn't just mean Star Wars products out there within the product line of Star Wars Home Video releases. It also usually refers to things actually in my Star Wars Home Video collection, which I refer to as my Star Wars Home Video Library. So things that are among the giant bookshelves here in my Star Wars office, as I call it now, that is, you know, all VHS tapes and CEDs and laser discs and all kinds of stuff. But it's part of my specific collection, and it's giving me a chance to show off that collection as well. Every once in a while, though, I'll run into something that I don't have that is way outside my price range if I wanted to actually acquire it. And usually that means it can't really be shown on the show. But not in this case. You may recall that in a recent episode we featured the Rebels Season 1 Steelbook from the UK. And that was an item that was donated to the show, donated to my collection, by Brian Snook. Brian being a longtime listener to the Star Wars Reports Rebels Roundtable and various podcasts and whatnot that I'm involved with who was just excited about Steelbook, he's sort of a Steelbook aficionado, who then said, hey, why don't you feature this? I'm going to send this along so you can check it out. Well, when he sent that, he also allowed me to borrow something that I had never actually got a chance to see before. It's a DVD that was included in the limited edition of a book. A book which at this point, depending on where you look for it, runs for several hundred dollars. Uh, the cheapest one I saw on Barnes & Noble's website was about $760, which is insane. A lot of times when you see them on eBay, they're going for about five to $600. There is one guy who's got one on eBay right now as we speak of uh, $300, uh, but then he says shipping 160 or something. Yeah, you're kind of an asshole. Um, basically trying to get back the money by having added it to the shipping costs rather than in the buy it now price, even though it's still coming out of your pocket, he's still basically getting way more than shipping is actually going to cost to make up for discounting it for the buy it now price and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the book in question is called Sculpting a Galaxy, and this is going to give me a chance to experiment a little bit with including still images in these videos because I really haven't done that before. But Sculpting a Galaxy is usually shown with one of two different covers. There's this one, and then there's this one. Now anytime I look for this online, Amazon, eBay, wherever, I'm always seeing that first cover, not the second. And there are two editions of this as far as if you're trying to track this down. It's easy to find just the regular book. It's just a standard hardcover. It's got about 300 images in it, lots of neat little gatefold type things that are in it. But it's just a book. Retail for about 50 bucks. You can find it most places these days for around 35, give or take. Getting the book is easy. It's the limited edition package that is really difficult to come by without paying a pretty penny. Although, granted, it cost quite a bit when it first came out, too. It's not like this is someone being gouged at this point. <laughs> We're being gouged in the first place. That limited edition is something I can only show you here via stock images. This here is an image of the contents of the limited edition sort of boxed set version of Sculpting a Galaxy by Lauren Peterson, subtitled Inside the Star Wars Model Shop. Check out these contents, then we'll run through what's actually included. So the book itself features a preface by George Lucas, a forward by Rick McCollum. Uh, it has chapter one, starships, two vehicles, three creatures, droids, and sculpts, four environments. It has what's referred to as snapshots across the galaxy, lots of different uh, uh, small pictures of people who are mentioned in the book. It's got a glossary, it's got a visual index, and it has an afterword by Phil Tippett. It's really sort of the definitive book on the Star Wars model shop. Now, the limited edition comes with a lot of physical goodies aside from just the book. You have four perforated postcard sheets, five extra gatefolds that aren't in the regular book, plus the family tree gatefold. You have seven hand-painted reproductions of the Death Star surface panels that were modeled by Lauren Peterson, 
an eight-page booklet with a guide to all the different model pieces in the limited edition. You have a 12-page booklet of classic models that describe the so-called white model process, a 16-page booklet with historical details about the model shop, a 32-page From Putty to Pixels book, so another book alongside this book and the booklets, accordion foldouts of ship cutouts, a certificate of authenticity, a, a clamshell box featuring a recreation of the Millennium Falcon's rear quarter, cubby holes sort of built inside it to include all the little models that are included with the book, a recreated so-called lost version of Luke's land speeder that includes removable figures of Luke, R2-D2, C-3PO, Obi-Wan, Kenobi, and a reflective stand to give it sort of a floating effect, and a DVD. That is our focus, since we are talking from the Star Wars home video library, not just from the Star Wars library here. That DVD is this. This is what he's allowed me to borrow here, which is putting a lot of trust in me, so thank you very much, Brian. We have Sculpting the Galaxy, doesn't say inside the Star Wars model shop, says the limited edition models. Got Lauren Peterson's name down at the bottom. You pop it open, there's your disc, Sculpting a Galaxy. This one does say inside the Star Wars model shop. Notice there it says Insight Editions, that's the company that put this out. Then you have your sort of liner notes like you would expect with a CD. Your cover, copyright details and such on the back. Little sort of message to readers and viewers from Lauren Peterson. A bit about the models. Continuing on to talking about the Death Star and whatnot. And then that wraps it up. Now this is much less a documentary and more of sort of like having somebody show you slides of their career and in the process narrating it along the way. Kind of like what the book does with all of its many different pictures and the text to go along with it. Only in this case you're actually hearing Lauren Peterson talking about what was done for each individual item that's being looked at. So, so you put the DVD into the player. One of the first things you're going to notice is that, dang it, it's not widescreen. This is something that was released in November of 2006, so we're kind of still in that transition period where widescreen is becoming the norm rather than full screen or pan and scan. And yes, this is full screen dimensions here, not widescreen. So in some cases, for instance, with the menus, they're taking up the entire full screen image. But then when you look at some of the segments, some of the pictures will take up the entire screen. Some of them will be slightly uh, shorter. Some of them will be video clips that you have. Uh, that are regular widescreen, so they're letterboxed, you know, the black bars on top and bottom. But either way, on a widescreen television, no matter how you're playing this thing, unless you have to be able to zoom it in, black bars on the side. So full screen dimensions on a widescreen screen these days, but back then, widescreen screens weren't necessarily the norm, okay? Second thing you're going to notice is it's going to kind of freak you out. I was kind of like, ah, black Satan, initially, because you put it in. And it'll play like this quick little thing of scenes, and then it goes to the menu. And before the menu becomes just a static menu, it looks like you're looking at the menu, and Lauren Peterson starts talking to you on the screen as if he's a hologram talking to you, and I did not expect that. I'm sitting here like, yeah, yeah, let's get to the menu. And then, ah! You know, I kind of threw me off that all of a sudden the TV is talking to me. Uh, and not just, you know, characters saying things, it's actually talking to you. Uh, it's a cool way of setting it up. I actually really think that's very creative, but it's not the norm, so it kind of caused me to jump back a little bit when I first put it in. Uh, but it makes for a kind of cool introduction here. Cool enough that I do think uh, it bears checking out here. So here's a quick clip from Sculpting a Galaxy inside the Star Wars model shop, the DVD from the limited edition. Uh, just the intro that brings us into the menu to begin with. Hi, I'm Lauren Peterson, the author of the book that you have. Obviously by now you found the DVD and hopefully we'll tell you all kinds of little stories that you've never heard before, wonderful little anecdotes in the, the making of the six different films. 
I hope you enjoy both the book and the DVD as uh, much as we had running through all the old memories. And uh, I hope they're really enjoyable memories for you too. Thank you very much. Tell me that wouldn't make you shit yourself if you didn't expect it. Come on. So the menu there you saw gives you options for play all. You have Star Wars featurettes. You have Lauren Peterson's talking galleries titled The View from the Shop. And then Lauren Peterson's talking galleries Adventures in Model Making. And then you just have the ability to check out the disc's credits. Um, if you hit play all, you're looking at about an hour worth of content. But it's not content that seems like it was meant to really be watched all in one sitting, because some of them are featurettes, some of them are from one series of the Talking Galleries, some are from the other series of Talking Galleries, as they call it. Talking Galleries being what I meant by, like, the slideshow here is mostly still images with him talking about them in small little snippets. Um, it feels a little disjointed to watch them all at once. I don't think they're really meant to be watched like that. I think it's more meant for you to read the book, and as you come across something that sounds interesting, check this out, dig down to that specific item, and then pull it up. So the featurettes play first. There are three of them. Uh, you have a jigsaw puzzle, which was from the episode two web documentaries, which of course can be found on the DVD release. And then 10 gallons of buildings, which is from the episode three web documentaries, which can be found on the episode three DVD. And of course, then we also have the episode three visual effects breakdown that was shown online. Now, when I first saw that, I was thinking, oh, really? You're just going to give us a whole bunch of featurettes that we've already seen before somewhere else. Fantastic. They don't. It's just those. It's just those three to start it off. And then it goes into the things that are the still galleries that are much more interesting to hear Lauren Peterson's anecdotes. I almost think that this whole thing could have done without the featurettes on it, but I'm wondering if this is something where they wanted people to be uh, pulled in by video rather than being pulled in by what amounts to still galleries with commentary. So, I don't know. An odd choice to include them, but whatever. You then have the first of the talking galleries, as it's called, the commentaries of still images called The View from the Shop. And the description reads, Model maker Lauren Peterson shares some of his recollections and perspectives on the beginning of his own Star Wars saga, accompanied by images from his personal photo collection, many of which have never been seen before. And again, you can choose Play All. You have so-called Wars Stories, which gives you options to check out on the Star Destroyer, Jawa Sandcrawler. They shoot models, don't they? Death Star Parking Lot, Cantina Horror Film, Visit to Yavin, and The Evolution of Tools. Then you have a section called the ILM Experience, with segments on beginnings, renaissance, setting up shop, model kits, a boilerplate technology, fun factor, beating the heat, and moving shop. Then you get the second set of talking galleries called Adventures in Model Making, and that, again, is broken down into smaller segments, though in this case not categories of segments, just 11 straight segments. The description, a look at some of the presentation material that Lauren Peterson has shared with fans all around the world regarding many of the ILM model shop's experiences in creating the Star Wars saga. Then, your segments, we have Choosing Scale, Sit, Walker, Sit. Kind of thinking like the end of, what was it, Family Ties? Sit, ooh, ooh, sit, good dog. Ooh, just saying. Uh, Space Slug Detail, Three Wampas, Feed City Gardening, so no, it's not all original trilogy, though the bulk of it is. Uh, Naboo Swamp, Mos Espa Arena Tips, Pod Racers, Geonosian Arena, Utapau, and Mustafar. And when you get to the end, because these are basically a bunch of smaller segments that if you hit play all at the beginning are just going to run together, whether it's running together as one set of talking galleries or another, or running the whole thing together with the featurettes and then both sets of talking galleries as an hour-long program, you get to the end, it just ends. No credits, no sense that this is all one whole, because it's not really meant to be. It seems we are much more expected to watch this in small snippets rather than all as one whole. There is a credits option again on the menu, but it's all just static text credits. It's not like clicking it and then a credits video rolls or anything like that. Now, i got to be honest, as weird as this is, it is an interesting thing to watch. I'm not really a big Star Wars behind-the-scenes guy. I mean, I like knowing about the behind-the-scenes stuff, but it's hard for me to get into it when it's in excruciating detail. Like, the books by Rinsler, you know, Making of Star Wars, Making of the Empire Strikes Back, I've got the e-books of them on my iPad, the enhanced ones with the video they can play and the audio they can play and all that kind of stuff, and I get to make it through one of them. Because in all the stuff leading up to... A New Hope entering production, I'm like, mm. whereas watching something like Empire of Dreams, 
I really like. It really depends on the presentation and how much it's meant to be there for a casual audience versus a really detail-oriented audience. I think this strikes a nice balance between the two. Those who are kind of frustrated by still images with commentary certainly have a right to be frustrated because it's not really a video presentation per se in that regard, at least not moving video. But if you listen to the anecdotes, you'll find that they're pretty amusing. Um, for instance, I had no idea that it was Lorne Peterson himself who's actually the sentry guy uh, in the rebel attire atop the tower on Yavin as the Millennium Falcon comes down. Why? Because it was him and Lucas who got to actually go on location to that particular site in Guatemala, and when they had the trash can that they turned into that, um, they were like, oh, who's going to go up in the trash can? Well, this he's the guy that doesn't have any kids or anything to worry about. Stick Lorne in the trash can and hope it doesn't fall down. Um, it's an interesting series of anecdotes. That said, I don't know that there's really anything in this video-wise that you're not going to be able to glean in some form from reading the book. Uh, I think this is an awesome limited edition package to be able to get. It's a great centerpiece for a collection. But at the same time, I think that those who are really interested in the behind-the-scenes stuff and want to see these pictures with some form of commentary, in that case text rather than uh, spoken, I think you're going to get as much out of the book by itself as you would have the limited edition, which has the book plus this stuff. Especially given the fact that the featurettes uh, that are video, you can see somewhere else anyway. Now, an interesting product here, not something I'll be adding to my collection anytime soon just because of the price tag associated with the thing. But uh, very cool. I like the fact that they're going sort of the extra mile with some of these limited editions for inside editions in the past, at least, when it comes to giving us something that's not just a book that they kind of take it beyond that and say, well, here's some more booklets and stuff, but also here's some physical goodies, and hey, here's a visual component or a video component to go with what you're reading. Uh, it really makes for a much more well-rounded experience and a really cool centerpiece to any Star Wars collection. So thank you very much to Brian for letting me borrow the Sculpting a Galaxy DVD here. I had fun checking it out and digging into the ins and outs of this limited edition product here that I haven't had a chance to lay my hands on personally. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Brian Snook for letting me borrow the disc again. And may the Force be with the home video viewers.